Right, there's a water boost unit. There's a car that needs a water boost unit. There's the man manifold. Goes into the carb. I'm going to drill that in a minute. Let's put this blue connector on. Fuse holder. Shunt for the meter. There's a meter. The gas machines go in there on the orange bracket. And Ruben is just making another bracket. Quick as you like. <laughs> so nice solenoid. Fuse holder and fuse. Chunky wire. Ruben's just prepping another bit to go to the actual unit, I presume. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Onto this little doodah. It's going to be mounted there. It's not mounted there at the moment. Right, let's start all over again. This is a car. This car has just been treated to this. This makes hydrogen and oxygen, which goes along this little clear tube around here and into there. How's it going in there? Good job done, good job done. Not why it does one covering up though, doesn't it? Yeah, I'll just get a black piece and just put it in and put a false back on that in line with that. It's right, that's secure enough. It's, it's wedged in because it tapers off. Yeah. It's right in that. Cool, man. Right, we fitted a water boost to this lovely car some time ago. It's had a, a bedding in period. The gas goes in there. And um, what we're going to do today is fit this, which is from Fuel Saver MPG. MPG.com or something. And there's the lambda wires coming in. The lambda sensor's right down there. This is the wire coming from the lambda sensor. Diddly D. We thought we had two lambdas, so we've got a dual adjuster because we're told to get a dual adjuster, but it only needs one. So that's going there. Luckily, the relay's there. So when we turn the hydrogen on and off, the lambda adjusters will go on and off. So let's see how we go. Right, there's the EFIE, there's its earth, there's its live, the red wire going through, joining the live that turns on the relay. Job's a good one. So this is Kazi's mass airflow wires, or mass air pressure, whichever way it is, it goes to the same place. That's going in there, the grey wire. And in the car, he's been shopping and he's bought this from a fancy HHO website. And he's bought a scan gauge which tells him how many miles per gallon, any faults with the ECU, anything like that. And uh, I think that's it. There's the display for the water boost, there's a switch for the water boost. Um, see what Cass says about it. Vault what goes to ECU, you just go straight in one cut in and out and does both switches when you're on um, either city or highway. So it's not like a crazy wiring diagram or anything, it's just one cut. Um, my name's Steve, um, I used to run a little course of 1.5 diesel and it was during its MOT, I had to wait in, it was no longer fit for purpose. And a friend of mine, um, he let me use, it's a, it's a Mercedes C200, he actually gave it to me, a good friend of mine. And um, obviously it's a two litre petrol and it's not the sort of vehicle I'd normally go for. So I started thinking how can I make this do what my 1.5 Corsa did, diesel. And um, I had a look at these hydrogen kits, what you can put on them, like water boost systems. And I came to a friend of mine, Oliver, and uh, we fitted one of these kits. Um, on top of that, once you put the actual system on, I mean, I, I didn't know much about them, but I walked into it and I watched how the system were fitted and I understood it to varying degrees. And then you've got to obviously override, on my car, it's computerised. So you've got to override the... Um, the ECU, the, the, like the Lambo sensors um, and the mass airflow sensors. 
So basically once the kit was on, two more switches fitted and have control over the mapping of the engine, meaning I can lean the fuel off. Um, and initial tests, I've got it up to basically while we're getting out of the course, which is um, proving the point to me. And how many miles per gallon is that? Well, I've, like I say, it's, it's um, two weeks ago when I got the mass airflow sensors on and I've been on a run on the motorway. I went from Burnley to Preston, um, turned around at the roundabout and back again, an average 42 miles per gallon. Before on that, that Mercedes of mine, it's done 128,000 miles. I was lucky if I were getting 25 to gallon out of it. Um, from new in the factory, they say you get 31 on a run and around 20 round town. Round town, I was getting 10 to 15 miles to gallon um, and about 25 on a on a motorway run. Like I say, Burnley Preston, uh, 42 to gallon, um, average. Um, I've got a scan gauge two which is a little trip computer and it, it reads your average miles per gallon, your miles per gallon real time speed, your RPMs, um, your power outputs, it tells you how much fuel's in the tank, how much you've used per journey, costs, how long till tanks empty, gives you all the information you need to get um, precise measurements. Um, and as I say, it's proven the point, it, it absolutely works. Um, I know there's a lot of scepticism out there, and if you go on YouTube and places like that, you end up confused by it. To me, a lot of these sceptics, if you, they're going back to like uh, late 80s, 90s, um, do-it-yourself kits for under $100, this and well, there's that much information out there, it is confusing. But um, one thing from my own research, after listening to what Oliver had to say, um, I've come to the same conclusions. Um, that, that, that you need a good baseline to work from. This cell is um, it's a jaw cell basically and it's as efficient as you can get. You've got your baseline and from that you can then take control of your ECU, your computer basically and your mapping of your fuel. Sounds complicated and it does come across as complicated but it's not. It's pretty simple really and when these systems are fitted it's it's relatively easy to maintain and keep them them gains. What's the highest miles per gallon you've seen while you've been cruising? Well, I, I zeroed it. I mean, this was a one direction thing. I know there's the the arguments about you need to go both ways and all the rest of it. But as I say, it's only been on um, two weeks where I've had the control over it that I've had. But I came on the, off the end of the M55. I zeroed it when I was up to running speed, um, and I averaged 54 to the gallon. From the end of the M55, um, quick quick burst on the M6 and along the M65 to Burnley. Um, if you pull up, if you're in like traffic and round town, then obviously if you if you stood still, you're not actually clocking miles up, and your averages will go down. The, uh, on the uh, mass airflow sensor switch, I've got two settings for it. It's a double switch. One of them's for an highway setting where I can lean it right off when the car's at running speed. Um, I can flick it over and I have slightly more fuel going for the city running so it's not cutting out around town or anything and it's smooth, I mean I've got full power and everything and it's it, at that it's still an improvement on the standard setup on that car and my returns, my miles per gallon, it, it's round town, I mean like I say it's a two week thing but I were averaging 22 round town I was lucky if I were getting that on, on runs I were doing now I know speed's come into it and, and all the rest of it. One thing this computer has, a, I've had put on it as men realise, is it's about a way you drive as well. And it's maybe more aware of that. But irrelevant of that, I can drive it with the system switched off and I can get my readings. I can have it, I can drive it with it on the city settings, get them readings and our way settings and there is a difference, it shows it. Um, so it's absolutely proven, it's not theory, it's proven. So that's the way I see it. <laughs> Thanks very much for that. No problem. Um, what would you like to show on it? Speed, revs, miles per gallon, real time time averages, and average overall average. Yeah. Right. I'll, I'll reset it when we get get up all the way and get going up. So just to recap what Kaz said before we put the uh, camera on, 
I've turned the hydrogen off, it's reset the scan gauge which has reset everything, everything's turned off. Now we're just driving a Mercedes on petrol. This will be a baseline. I'm going to get on the motorway, do a bit of cruising and try different settings and show it on the camera. It's all good. Right, I'm both shocked and appalled. This Mercedes with no adjustment, those are the figures. We've been down the motorway, gone round and round about to the end of the motorway. We're coming back up the motorway, it's on cruise control. You can see the miles per gallon there, 27, 28. It looks quite impressive, but we're going downhill. That's the average, 22. I wouldn't want to be driving a 2 litre Mercedes at 1.40 a litre without hydrogen. So the next test is going to be what we're we having next, with everything on. With everything, with everything on. But look at those figures. It's a computer. Computers only lie when the uh, person putting the information in is off the tits. But this is a car putting the information in. 21.1 mile per gallon. We use exactly a gallon there. 22.2 miles. Maximum revs. 0.4 hours, 57 mile per hour max, 53 mile per hour average, £4.94 cost. Oh. Wow. So that was no hydrogen, no adjusters, a lovely Mercedes, well maintained, doing its best, and it cost nearly a fiver to do 20 miles. Oh look, that's actually average, 49.5, and we're currently doing 43 because we're going up a hill. We're not tailgating anyone. I don't know which way the wind's blowing. Alright, so we're coming to the end of the same journey again, but this time the gas machine's warm. We're into the 40s. Coming off now, so. Such a break. 53. So when it goes loop, it's shut fuel off the injectors because I'm slowing down. Do you want to go through the averages then before it yeah. affects them? Just wait until we get to the bottom and then we'll go the same mileage then I do it down here. Right? Didn't do a closed loop, did it like that before on the no adjusters. Average 